Hello everyone and welcome back. In this section, we are going to talk about custom materials and programming custom materials and shaders in Unreal Engine 4. So we're going to first get an introduction into how Unreal Engine 4 deals with materials and allows you to create photorealistic imagery by using physically based shading in its material pipeline. We will then take a look at what basically materials and shaders are and how you can utilize them in your game. We go and implement a material function or rather a set of material functions that would allow you to control the look of the player character as the hit point or the HP of your player character changes. And we finalize everything by programming the shader parameters that allow you to implement these changes. So first, let's get an introduction to material programming and how you can utilize these materials in your game. First, we will take a look at the Unreal Engine's material editor. I'll walk you through several things in there. Then we take a look at the anatomy of a material and how a material actually works and functions. And we learn about material nodes and expressions that Unreal Engine provides you with to program your materials. But before we go ahead and start looking at what materials are and how you can work with them, let me show you the result of the program as you create the materials and work the materials on your player character. So here's the game that we already have so far. And when you play the game, you notice that the hit point of the player is 750, and it's just using that dull looking material that has been already assigned to your player. Now, once you enter the spawning volume, as you notice, something happens to the hit point of the player, and it was 750, so we're dropping that to 650. So every time the player enters the volume, we subtract 100 units from its hit point. So what we're going to do is, upon updating the hit point of the character, we are going to update the material so that the material would look more red and red as the player hit point decreases and reaches zero. Right? So when we enter one more time, notice that the hit point is 750, and the player is looking more and more reddish. And so as your hit point decreases, your player becomes more and more desperate. And so we can also pick up this spawned pills to change the hit point of our character. And as you notice, as the hit point goes down, the character becomes more and more red, conveying some sort of um, health problem. And as the hit point increases, your player character's color becomes more and more neutral. And if the hit point decreases a lot, then you would see a more reddish color on your player. Okay, so we are going to implement this functionality. Now to implement the functionality that you just saw, we will need to use the material editor to create materials and then create a material instance that would enable us to be able to program it from our C++ code. So what I'm gonna do is first, we, let's take a look at our character. And so if you click on the character, it opens up the character blueprint editor. And then what we're going to do is open the viewport of our character and take a look at what we have. So in the viewport, if you click on the character in skeletal mesh, you would notice that there is a skeletal mesh assigned to the object. And then this skeletal mesh has two materials, element zero and element one. Element zero is the full body of the character's materials. And element one is the plate on its chest. What we are going to do is we are going to make changes and edits to element one material. So close this object and if you look and open up your starter content in the content browser, you would see that there is a folder called mannequin. And this is where the skeletal mesh of our character is. Then if you click on expand the mannequins folder and you click and expand the character, you will notice that there is a material subfolder in there. And the material subfolder, if you remember from the viewport of our character, there was a material called MUE4 man body, 
which was assigned to the character. So this is the material. Okay. So we are going to duplicate this material, make changes to it, and then create an instance for this material to work with. Okay. So for now, let's first take a look at the material editor in Unreal Engine and see how you can create materials. So in order to do this, we are going to make sure that we are in the materials folder of the character folder of the mannequin and click on add new and then materials and textures and then you can click on material. When you click on a material, a new material is going to be created for you and here it's called new material. So I'm going to call this M test mat and when you create it you can double click and open it up and this opens up your material editor. The material editor will give you a material node and this is the resulting node of your shader which basically compiles a physically realistic material for your object. On the left upper corner you would see a preview window which shows you how the material would look like and then at the bottom you will see the details panel of your material. So you have access to things such as your physical material that you want to assign you can also choose your material domain. For example, do you want it to be applied to a surface, a deferred decal, do you want it to be a light function, a post process, or a user interface? You have access to its blend mode, which as of Unreal Engine 415, you have opaque, which is completely opaque, non-see-through materials. You have masks, which allows you to put opacity masks on top of your material so that some parts of it will be see-through, some parts of it wouldn't. Translucent would allow you to create your material and lighting so that you can see through the material. You could use this mode for things like glass, water, and things like that. You have additive, modulate, and alpha composite. That basically you can make your material functions to be additive or you want them to be modulate in the sense that they're multiplied with each other to create the final look and so forth. You have the shading model for your material that you can select. By default, it is called the default lit, which means that your material would get its lighting calculation from the lights in the scene. You have access to subsurface surface materials which allows you to create things like skin or wax type materials. Pre-integrated skin which also can be applied for skin materials. You can have a clear coat material kind of like a material that is like a metallic material on cars for example. That you would have a, la a lower layer material and then a top layer as a coat. For your material. You can have a subsurface profile, two-sided foliages, hair, cloth, and eye materials. So we are going to stick to the default let. And then you would have some access to some additional functionalities, additional advanced properties to your material. You will program your material and your shader from within the material editor. And what you can do is you can right-click and then select material expressions from the list that pops open or you can type in the expression you want in the search panel of palette and then drag the selected material expression in to program. So you have all sorts of expressions here that I will explain in, in the next videos. For your material itself, the material node will allow you to use multiple channels to program how you want the exact look of your material to be. You would have access to the base color. This will be kind of like the base color RGB value of a material. You have access to metallic channel that makes your material to be metallic-like or metal-like or non-metal-like. You would have a specularity channel that allows you have to have shiny highlights on your material. You have access to roughness which makes your material to look smooth or non-smooth. You can also make emissive color to make your material shine as well. The normal channel allows you to use a normal map to create crevices and little dents on your material. The world position offset allows the material to make changes to the geometry and to move the object on which the material is applied. Now to show you how it actually works, let's create a material really simply. What we are going to do is we'll bring a constant 3 vector and then make the color of it to be like bluish and then we can plug the output of this constant material on to our base color and on the preview you will see how this material looks like. So this material kind of looks like a golf ball. Now if I wanted to make this material a little bit more shiny I can create a constant scalar value and then apply it to my metallic channel 
and then change the value of this to let's say 0.75. So the higher the metallic value, more our material looks like it is a metallic object. So if you increase this to say 95%, then it would look very, very metal-like, right? So now it's not just like a ping pong ball, it looks like a little ball bearing. You could manipulate the scalar output channel of your material, and that way you can work with the scalar highlight, which is the material expression constant that can focus the light, as you see, on the highlight, make your material look very, very specular, right? And then the roughness, again, allows you to make your material to look as if it belongs to a glossy, smooth surface that is very, very highly reflective, as you see here, with very, very low roughness values, all the way to 50% roughness, which makes the material look very much like metal, and a little bit shiny, and a little bit reflective as well. Okay, so these are effectively your basic channels for your material. Now we can bring a texture coordinate, and then we're gonna go and apply a normal texture, let's say a normal ceramic tile, and then we apply that into the normal channel of our material, and so your material now should look like it has tiles on it. So this is basically how you can pre create and work with materials in UE4. And obviously you can have complex channels that create a very complex look for your material, but this is a rough introduction to how materials should look like in Unreal Engine 4. So we're gonna save, and have our material created. Now that we've seen what the anatomy of materials are and how you can create these materials, 